Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to make pearlescent paint um, using something called liquid pearl, which is a uh, mica powder that's dispersed. And we're going to mix the liquid pearl into acrylic 65. Okay. You want to make sure you're using a glossy medium and not a matte medium because a matte medium is going to kind of dull out the pearlescent qualities of the liquid pearl. So on its own, the liquid pearl mixed with the acrylic 65 looks like this. It's a very subtle pearlescent. It actually shows up better on black paper, which I'm going to show you, or black painted background, or really any dark background, not necessarily black. And a really fun thing to do with liquid pearl is to tint it with transparent pigments. So we're going to try that today. I'm going to add in some pyrrole rubine TRP, which is a very deep, uh, transparent red. And we're going to make it a pearlescent red. Add even more red and see if you can get a little gradient going. So you can get a subtle pearlescent effect or a more intense one. Once again, starting with acrylic 65. Acrylic 65 is a really great medium to use with anything pearlescent, glossy, shiny, uh, because acrylic 65 dries so clear and glossy. Um, another good alternative is uh, urethane 32. I'm going to now add in some phthalo green yellow. This is a very strong pigment. It has a very high tinting strength, so you don't need too much to get a really strong effect. So that was just a few drops. We've got a beautiful pearlescent green. The next color I'm going to try is a really gorgeous quinacridone. Uh, it's quinacridone violet 55. It's one of our newer pigments um, and it's a really brilliant color. It has a really strong tinting strength. So it's a very fun one to play with and it's also transparent so that makes it very versatile if you want to uh, use it in conjunction with a a liquid pearl, uh, a super shine silver, anything like that. So as you can see, Liquid Pearl is a very beautiful pearlescent effect pigment that has a lot of different applications. And now I'm going to 
play with some interference colors, interference dry pigments. So I'm going to show you how to make a paint using um, interference pigments. Um, and it's the same process as making a paint out of any dry pigment, but I'm just going to give you a little rundown. So you start with your empty container and your dry pigment. And ideally you want to wear a dust mask. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to be very careful not to kick up dust. But uh, ideally in your studio, especially if you don't have good ventilation, you want to be very careful not to disturb the, the powder too much and also to wear a dust mask as much as possible. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of my dried pigment. In this case, it's the Interference Satin Green. And whenever you're using a dry pigment of any sort, whether it's an interference one or a regular dry pigment, you want to add in some of your dispersed water. This is going to really help it mix into your binder and make the dry particles receptive to water. So I'm going to mix that in. It's not going to be a total paste yet. Um, you just want to get it to that kind of wet sand consistency and just incorporate it in as much as you can. And I just put in about um, less than 5% uh, dispersed water. Just between, you usually put in between like 1 and 5% dispersed water. I'm gonna add in, gonna add in a little bit of regular water. Just enough to get a paste. The less water you add in, the better. If you add too much water and you get a watery paste, then you're gonna have a watery paint, so you wanna avoid that. So once you have a pretty consistent paste, you're going to add your acrylic 65. Again, you can use any clear binder um, that dries glossy. You want to stay away from matte binders when you're using interference pigments, micas, metallics, glitters, anything like that that's shiny, pearlescent, sparkly, because the matte binders are going to really deaden the, the reflectiveness of those kind of materials. So acrylic 65 is a good one to use for the interference. And they really show up best over a dark background. So I'm gonna brush this on over our black background and see how it looks. Now the acrylic 65 is milky when it's wet, but it dries totally clear. So this effect is going to show up a lot more drastically when it's fully dry. Let's add in a little more acrylic 65 and you can see what a more subtle interference effect looks like. So you can see the green is showing up a little bit more. If you paint this on top of white, you'll see a sort of subtle pearlescent effect, but you don't see as much of the that green interference effect. So you can already see it a little bit. As it dries, it'll become really noticeable.